So the interior starting out like this. It actually is a pretty good looking interior for as old as this truck is. You consider it's 50 years old. Uh, and the dash is cracked and stuff, but all in all it's pretty good shape. I think someone's replaced the seat before. There's no way that this seat's 50 years old and still has the fabric in this good a condition and like the bolstering in the seat is even, or bolstering, the foam in the seat's actually still pretty even feeling. Uh, although it does kind of look like it's a green seat, like it, maybe someone went back with the original color. There's some cigarette burns in it and that sort of stuff, but all in all it's be a good seat. Uh, of course the carpet's going to come out, the floor mat's going to come out. All this stuff's going to get ready for some paint here. We get it torn down and get it emptied out and see what's hiding in this thing. So here it is, seats out. Uh, looks like there's a pile of seat belts back here. I uh, kind of figure out where these guys go. Seems kind of strange, right? There'd be like a small, I don't know, GM looking seat belt here, but then the other seat belts are pretty fat like this. That's kind of odd, isn't it? So you got an old gun rack here. I'm gonna have to reinstall that thing. Still screw holes in the back wall here from where that uh, gun rack was actually mounted at one point. Should put that back in and drive around with uh, guns hanging out of the back window. Looks like I got some new tools. Some uh, good clean pliers. High quality uh, Phillips head screwdriver. Roadside toolkit here. Got a new uh, 13 16 spark plug socket. I'll use one of those. Uh, looks like an old lighter, some Mardi Gras beads, oh uh -huh, yeah, good time in here. Looks like the uh, some rats have been hanging out here. I wonder if they were fighting with that skunk under the hood. Uh, definitely tearing the seat up and tearing up the bottom of the uh, this sound deadening insulation here. It's a good pile of junk on the floor here. Uh, some old bills, gaskets, paperwork. There's a rear view mirror. Uh, looks like it's full of paper and stuff. So obviously somebody's having a issue with that thing coming loose and falling off. Probably just best to go to the junkyard and find another uh, rear view mirror. Stick it on there if I replace the windshield. Uh, 30-06 round. I suppose that thing will still fire. Looks like it's been in the truck rolling around for quite a while. Got a hammer. Uh, it's a good wire brush. Set to restore this truck. More pliers. Package of Marlboro Blacks. Hardcore. Looks like the frame for the radio. Kind of explains some of the speaker wire that's been kind of strung around in this thing here. Check out this. Man, super green. The carpet's actually in good shape underneath here. They must have had a, that mat must have been on here the whole time, which is impressive for Ford's quality for having a mat hold up 50 years and not break like that. Kind of be cool to keep that color in here. The rest of it's all sun faded and just, you can see the sun just tore it up over time, but the, uh, that base color on the carpet keeping out of the sun really uh, really kept it nice looking. Pretty funny. Well that doesn't look very good. Uh, I guess I'm going to redo the interior. Probably ought to spend some money and replace these uh, carpet trim hold downs here. These are pretty well worn from years of people getting in and out and you know stepping on these things and wearing through them. I didn't think these things were super expensive uh, but I also didn't think to buy any so I'll have to go look those up and maybe order some of these.
Well, we're making some headway here. Um, so I pulled the glove box out, which was just two screws that held the door on and a bunch of small screws that held the like cardboard insert in. Um, radio thing was already missing. Of course, the ashtray just pumps out. And then the, all the switches on the driver's side, seems like they're just a big old uh, game of guess how this switch is held in here, because no two are the same. Uh, I think I've got all the dash pad bolts out of here. Looks like there was two, four, six, eight, nine of those bolts. Um, there's two on the inside of the dash, one on each end. And there's a bunch that just go across that hold this final dash down to the metal piece underneath. So, um, ashtray, glove box door. I'm going to take some pliers and try to work this dash pad up off of here. So it turned out there's two more bolts. There was one here and one through this side, like top side of the glove box as well. And they're pointing up, so you have to like use a swivel and a ratchet to try to get them out. It took me forever. And I think it's pretty free now. Yeah, still weren't messing around with this thing. Uh, 12 fasteners to hold this stupid thing in here. It really seems like, uh, I don't know, four or five would have done it. But whatever, it's out. It's uh, actually kind of in one piece still. Like I'm surprised it has this much flexibility. I figured it would have just blown into pieces when it came out of here, but it didn't. So kind of interesting. Well, I made it pretty far without any problems today. Everything came apart. I don't think anything even broke, really. Besides that dash when it came out. Uh, problem here is that the passenger side floor pan has got some rot in it here. Uh, so it kind of starts here at this corner, up across the tow board, and uh, it comes down. There's some rot here. There's a hole this far over. The rest of it's pretty solid looking. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, uh, I've got some of these universal 18 gauge steel patch panels. Well, it's not a patch panel, it's just, uh, like steel to do patchwork with. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, make a cardboard template that kind of draws out the place or the section that I want to replace here and go in and cut this out and try to leave as much of the stock metal as I can. So there's a real nice seam here. I took a wire wheel and just uh, took the seam sealer off. So it looks like this will, with a few spot welds, this should come right up and it give me a nice place to spot weld right back down to. And then where the metal's still good, around the back side of this, uh, this downward turn here, I think I'll just slice it here, that way I can weld into it and try to not have a big giant section of new floorboard here. Uh, it won't have this uh, bead roll in it. I don't think I have a way to put a bead roll back in the metal. So, all right. So I found a piece of cardboard in an old Felpro gasket kit, which is about the same size as this piece of patch metal I have, uh, which is nice. So I'm just gonna kind of say, 
Uh, we'll patch it starting around this section. I'm not sure this is 100%. It looks like the floor is actually wider up front than it is back here. So I'm going to just kind of make a mark at this section and uh, cut this section out back here. Let's trim it a little bit. The section I want to replace looks like I want to cut out oh, this here. There's some rust. So it kind of comes this to this section. Make sure you get some good metal to weld onto. Uh, it comes through here. A little more rot on this side of this downward turn that I like to see, so um, I might make a couple of little patch pieces and tack this back together. Uh, but I think for now, this will get me through most of the rough stuff I want to get rid of. Okay, so all I've done here is just uh, kind of trace out the pattern that I had drawn on the floor down below and. Just kind of followed the bend radius here and made sure I knew where that bend radius was going to fall and uh, just marked this uh, B-roll on the floor so I know kind of where this edge is going to be that I want to cut up next to and kind of just made sure this is the pattern I wanted. It lines up with the side over here right where this uh, seam is that was seam sealed up earlier. So I'm going to do is just kind of cut this out and uh, Start laying it in, kind of just trimming it with scissors to make sure it fits over all that rust we want to get rid of. All right, so I'm going to start out by just removing as much of this rusted metal as I can just with the air hammer. So I've got a pretty small, well, medium-sized air hammer. This isn't a absolute beast or anything. And it's not a real tiny hammer, but it has some pretty quick uh, and small blows per second. You don't want the huge air hammers. The huge air hammers seem to really tear up a lot of metal in a hurry. Um, what I'm going to do with this is just go along and kind of take this rusty floor pan off of the seam here. And as I find where it's stuck down, where it's spot welded, I'm going to go through and drill the spot weld. And to do that, I just use one of these flat... Uh, spot weld drill bits. I think this is maybe a cobalt bit, bit or something. And I'll drill it out and I'm gonna, all I'm going to do is drill through the first layer of metal here and then once I get through the first layer I'm going to be careful not to go into the second layer and then you'll see that the air hammer will just chip, chip it right up. Rest of this floorboard, I'm just going to use an air saw to make pretty quick work of it here. And uh, so I'll just air saw this and follow the line that I've got drawn out here. And I'll draw, I'll cut up to the point where I know there's a second layer underneath here going forward. And from there on, I'll have to get probably a grinder or something to just cut through that first top layer and not actually cut into that lower floor pan there.
Well, there's a hole in the floor now. This uh, there's a little bit of additional rot here in this corner. I'm gonna have to do something with. Um, but here's that brace we were talking about that was underneath the cab. This uh, whatever this front lower tow board section is. So there's a couple spot welds on it. I drilled and took the metal off. So that gives us a nice place to tack the front of this floor back down to here. And then, uh, so another spot here, you know, give us another place to tack this on. And then we'll have to, of course, we'll have to stitch well this whole thing here, which is never fun. But uh, all in all, not too terrible. Um, there's some extra rod on this wall as well. And uh, so looks like what happens here is there's a, a base, like an inch wide piece of trim that comes out of here. It's part of the cab. And uh, let's see if I can put some light on this for us. So what it looks like happens here is this uh, base runs along the inside of the door jam, the lower door jam here, and it runs across. And on the other side, this base kind of comes up, and then it just terminates off this direction. It gives you a, a, the floor a place to sit on to it. I guess tack weld in a few spots. So what I'll probably do is uh, make a 90 degree, like a piece of angle iron out of this 18 gauge and just tack it to this wall that's existing here. And that'll replace that lower floor support. And then I'll have to bring this wall down because the wall kind of got rotted up here. And so what I'll do is just cut a, a square section out of the wall and square this off nice and evenly. And uh, then I can put the wall down and then the last part that goes in is the floor. And the floor comes over and sits against the side of the wall here and then seam sealer covers the whole thing. So we'll kind of just take it step by step. I'll finish taking that rod out of there a little bit at a time. I'm going to take the rod out of the wall and cut this lower section back till the rod's gone there and then start putting some good metal back in there. So got most of the rust cut out of the floor at this point. Uh, got most of the Surfaces cleaned up, prep ready to go. So it looks like uh, this inner wall had a little bit of rot on it, so I'm going to um, put this toe support piece that was part of the original cab wall here. I just I sliced it out and then I've made a repair panel for it that will fit here, and then another one that'll uh, fit back behind it. So once I weld those back in, those will sit nice and flush there. Um, I took this template that I cut out and I traced it onto the piece of metal and I just used this to make sure that this was going to fit into my hole okay that I had and so I transferred it to a piece of metal and, and I used a five gallon bucket to make this radius on here and I've got it. I just kind of keep sneaking up on it, sneaking up on it. And it looks like it's actually going to fit really nicely. Let's so kind of get it welded in place here. Uh, so it's got the provisions for the actual screw holes on the floor. It all lines up with my little artistic cutout that I made here. And sits, it'll sit nice and flat on top of the two little panels that I made there. If we look down this way, you can also see that there's a gap here still. Uh, so again, once I weld the patch panel in place. I'll have to come back and make an additional patch panel to get fill this little triangle in here. That was just the last end of the cancer and my piece of uh, panel I started with just wasn't quite long enough to run the whole length of it there. But I don't know. I think I'm gonna about to get to the welding part here and be done with this repair. So before I cover this back up I'm going to use some of this rust encapsulator just to make sure that that rust doesn't uh, continue on. I'm going to spray it all as far as I can up inside of this cavity and then inside of the uh, cavity inside of the, I guess this is the A-pillar here, just to prevent that rust from crawling around anymore. Make use of this wire brush that I found in the truck. That seems fitting. So step one of this corner is about ready to go into place here. Everything's fitting all nice and flush and I put a sheet metal screw in here in the center just to hold it down in place so it makes some good contact with these plug wheels on the floor. I made this uh, prison shank to go on the side over here 
and patch back up that uh, hole I got going. I'll set that back in there in a minute. But, um, so I'm gonna get these first uh, couple pieces welded in place and I'll come back and fill in the remaining holes that I have. Uh, the one at the back and the one at the front here. But So then I also put some holes in the panel here for the plug welds that I drilled out. I was gonna put those plug welds back in and weld this plate back to the structure with the plug welds to make that a nice easy step. The uh, butt welding here is always the biggest pain. to go through and stitch all these floor pans back together. But once it's done, it's done and it makes a nice solid weld. So I'll get cranking on my tack welding here. Well, that was a huge mess and a lot of work, but looks like it's all patched up now, ready to go. Uh, that's sidewall is patched up. All the rot that was in here is all cleaned up and got nice solid metal on it now. I went along and uh, blended the floral well here and stuff and made that pretty seamless. Um, I'll actually take some seam sealer and go back over this weld joint here just to fill in any sort of imperfections or anything and then put the, uh, the seam sealer that Ford actually put along the side of this gap. I'll go back and put that back in there and put a seam sealer back along the edge as well before I put some paint on it. Oh. But nice fresh metal in there. The Swiss cheese is gone. Always nice to know that you're uh, not going to fall out of your floorboard when you step in the truck. So I'm going to pull this old glass out of here. Uh, it's pretty cracked and beat up. I was hoping to not do this yet, but I think it's going to make it a lot easier to repaint this interior with the glass out. I talked to my glass guy and he said he can get me a glass this week. So I'm going to order a new gasket for it and then hopefully by Friday um, the paint will be dry, windshield will show up, and hopefully I'll have a gasket and a windshield here that I can put back in. Uh, I've never pulled one of these out before. Looks like it's a rope, steel ins a rope seal install type gasket. Uh, so I'm just going to try to pull this old crusty gasket out of here and maybe take a utility knife and cut it and then try to just prop this windshield out. So we'll see how it goes. It's out. Total of uh, nine minutes from when I started uh, cutting on it a second ago to taking it off, dropping pieces on the hood, and actually setting it on the ground out there. Um, all I did was cut the seal along this pinch weld. I guess where the seal kind of like flips up under the pinch weld. I just essentially cut that in half all the way around and then ran the blade between the glass and the seal in case there's any sort of like glue or urethane on there. It seemed to cut it off and come out just fine. So hopefully it goes back in just as easy, but I kind of doubt that. So here's the theme we're going with. Uh, so I got this new carpet, which is, uh, I think it's a stock interiors. It looks like they just uh, sent a box from, so uh, this came from Auto Custom Carpets, Inc., but I ordered it from stockinteriors.com. Uh, anyway, this is the carpet they sent. So I got a carpet with uh, some good extra padding on the back and stuff. I got the LMC Truck Special. This is the TMI uh, seats that LMC Truck sells. Uh, those, they're brown leather with the contrasting leather stitching and then the, uh, the matching dash pad. And I got a couple new off-white arm pads. So and just get a preview of what this is going to look like here when it all comes back together. Hopefully by tomorrow uh, I'm going to try to get the truck all prepped and get the inside painted today and let that paint dry overnight and then carpet, seats, dash and just put it all back together tomorrow. Uh, anyway, pretty excited to see all this stuff in there. Definitely a nice updated hot rod type look. I think it'll look great. You know, each side of the seat is actually uh, independently tiltable, so you can recline your seat a little bit. Of course, the cab's right back here, so you can't go back too far, but 
Kind of gives you some nice adjustability. This is a real nice solid piece too. They made a real nice uh, tube frame for it and stuff. And even the dash is real nice. It's got a real nice fiberglass uh, frame underneath it. So after working all day and doing a whole bunch of sanding and cleaning and sanding, uh, this is what I come up with. So I got the cab prepped and trying to tape this thing off in a reverse type order was kind of challenging. Um, you're used to taping off so that you keep paint out of the vehicle. In this case, you're taping off to keep the paint in the vehicle and on the, off the outside of the vehicle, which is uh, kind of hard to do. Anyway, I think it's going to work out okay for me. I'm going to shoot the inside of the cab and the door jams all at the same time. And this should give me a good way to shoot everything and get full coverage, shoot the whole cab in here. I covered my light in some plastic, so hopefully I don't get it all nasty and I get enough light where I can actually paint the inside of the cab here and the door jams all at once and the dash and get this thing rolling. All right, shoot more of that uh, boxwood green. We mixed up, in, I guess, a couple of videos ago where I painted the underside of the hood. Uh, same thing, just a single stage enamel. And got some fast reducer because it's getting kind of cold in here tonight. So here it is after a fresh coat of paint. Looks a lot cleaner inside now. Uh, the paint wasn't quite as shiny as I wanted it to be. I was hoping it would uh, be a little glossier looking. Oops. But I think for a quick paint job, it'll be good. And I'm gonna try to take a, maybe a buffer or a polisher to some of this in some spots where it just kind of has like a, an odd haze to it. I'm not sure we can see like across the, top of the windshield where it's nice and glossy and then it kind of just turns into like a dollar haze over there. So maybe I'll just take some rubbing compound and try to polish that up a little bit. But all in all the part of the dash it's going to show because the cover comes down you know over the top half here and then goes all the way across. So all you really see of the dash is from like this line down. And that all turned out good. Looks like the door jams are going to turn out real good. It's got a nice gloss to it and uh, looks nice and new, so I'm pretty happy with those. Should look real nice, much better than it did with the rusting and the pitting that was going on before. So here's a pile of stuff I'm going to run across the polisher. This is all the interior, like, dash trim pieces that fit below the dash pad and the part that goes around the key that has this wood grain on it. Uh, so I'm just going to try to polish up all this aluminum here and then all the uh, trim bezels for the switches, the wipers, the uh, cargo lights, the headlights, and try to make that stuff pop a little bit more before I put it back in the truck. <laughs> So my attempt to clean up the interior here, um, I took a scotch Brite and some degreaser and cleaned up the visors. I bought another one of these visor holder clips here and then I cleaned up the door panels. Um, so the inside of the door panels are pretty messed up so I bought these new uh, door handle interior panel I guess from LMC Truck. Uh, so these are the off-white or beige white color that LMC sells. Um, according to the 
VIN tag on the inside of the truck. This is actually like a light parchment color or some sort of parchment white. So SEM or SEM, whatever you call this company, actually sells a vinyl leather die in a can. So this is the LMC part. This is a production, like a reproduction part here. But the color is pretty spot on, it looks like, if the cap is any indication of what's actually in this uh, can. Which is kind of neat too, the, uh, this is the original visors out of the thing. The visors haven't, ever, haven't been touched besides using a Scotch-Brite. And that color that LMC is sending versus what's actually in this truck from 50 years ago is a pretty close match. So So here's more things I've never done before, and products I haven't used. Uh, this is an actual automotive vehicle wrap, like you'd see them wrap a whole car with. This is a Vivid product. It's just something I bought off of Amazon, and uh, it was cheap. Well, kind of gives it a more modern look like that, but uh, I'm not real happy with the way the seam turned out over here on the side. Um, I guess no one's really going to look at it that close, but just kind of annoying to order a product that you think is going to cover the whole thing, and then it doesn't cover the whole thing, and you kind of have to make do. But luckily this truck's not going to a show for points or anything, just kind of want something to drive around and look a little bit newer. I'm going to start with the uh, puzzle here to put all this trim stuff back on here. i got my trim panels, which are covered, and uh, try to just start putting these switches and pieces back in here. I think I probably should have taken a picture of what went where. I think I had a cigarette lighter, a dome light, and then this one's got a little pin sticking out of it. I think one of these had a pin sticking out of it too. So I'm getting ready to put this dash in the truck and uh, just kind of looking it over here, making sure everything looks like it's going to be good for me. The uh, studs or the bolts that are actually cast or molded into this dash are a different thread pitch than what came out of the truck. So I tried to put the original uh, nuts, like the dash retainer nuts, on this dash just before I put it in the truck. And the, uh, this has got a fine thread and the ones that were in the original Ford dash or a coarse thread. So I'm guessing this is a 1032 or something. I had it, uh, I just had some hardware laying around. So I've got some hardware and some nuts to secure this thing into the truck now before I put it in there. There are no studs or retainer hardware on the inside of the dash. This is the windshield side. This is the, uh, like the glove box side here where it comes over. So the other one had like a stud I think on the, both ends it had a couple littered throughout the center. I think there was, we counted what, 13 or something to, in total? 
So this has four. Uh, looks like this is a fiberglass piece instead of the floppy like hardware fiber piece that the dash came with. So we get this thrown in the truck, get some hardware put in it, and bolt it in place once and for all. So that piece is really nice looking. It went in way better than I expected it to. Um, you do, would have to take the gauge cluster out and the glove box out to put this in. The uh, four studs, there's two up here behind the gauge cluster. There's two other studs behind the glove box over there. But all in all, this thing fits very tightly, very nice. Uh, no complaints at all with that. It's a, it's a super nice piece there. It's going to be a little bit careful putting it in. It does seem to want to kind of drag on this weather seal lip here. So I kind of just was able to push on it and kind of bow the dash pad up in the center and work it in. But once it went into place there, it seems to fit very, very nicely. So put the carpet in the truck. Uh, it's a gray, it's supposed to be a gray carpet, but it looks super green, uh, which kind of works out for this truck. Um, Kind of disappointed though that I ordered a gray carpet, like a light gray, and it's definitely a green color. Um, it kind of gives it like a green on green on a green, which it was originally, so it's kind of a neat deal. Um, anyway, this carpet seems like it fits pretty good. It's got some pretty good uh, molding and stuff to it. It all kind of dropped in pretty simply. Had to make a few cuts like around the, the gas pedal here, it's stuck on the gas pedal where it wouldn't go up. All the way against the firewall like it was supposed to and of course I had to trim out the hole for the high low beam switch and all then all in all looks like it actually uh it lays in pretty good uh it's got a nice like stitch seam all the way around the edge which lines up real nicely i got the carpet for a cab without a gas tank in it because i plan to take this gas tank out of here and i was like well i'll just kind of deal with the carpet until uh, I take the tank out, but I may I may change the carpet anyway. Just go to an actual gray color, find a different manufacturer that doesn't give me a green one. So here's the frame to the seat. I just took this and uh, marked some holes in the the carpet and cut out where the bolts are supposed to go through, and just cut a, a square in each corner. That way you're not trying to fight like two specific little tiny holes and fish the bolt through the seat frame, and then find that hole down on the floor underneath the carpet. So this still gives it plenty of uh, clamping ability to have this foot sit on here and actually clamp the carpet down to the floor like I wanted it to and should make it pretty easy to take the seats in and out of this thing as well. Um, so I'm going to go bolt this frame to the seat like it says to and then put it all back in the truck here as one big assembly. Alright, well here's some more stuff where I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, these are the seat tracks that came with the seats from TMI. It looks like the seat track just bolts onto the bottom of the actual seat itself. Okay, so just installed both the seat tracks and uh, went ahead and set the seat tracks evenly so that the clamping mechanism, you've got teeth moving up and down, so that this top clamp here is on the one, two, three hole down on both sides. So three holes down there, other side of the seat, uh, one, two, three holes down there. It came with this uh, spring connector that you have to install. Um, so all that does is clip on to the driver's side here so as you activate the lever it, it pulls this. So I think this thing's ready to go. I'm going to put the frame on it now and it looks like the frame just bolts onto the four studs that come on the bottom of the seat tracks. Well, spoke too soon. Uh, so it's a frame that have, have some uh, clearance holes drilled in it here. So there's a, you can see the two studs for the seat track actually protrude through the two holes here without any sort of problems. Uh, the passenger side though, you can see when I go to try to put this frame on here, that uh, the holes are just too narrow. 
So that fixed it. All I did was take a die grinder and just elongated each one of these holes here slightly so that it makes more of a oval type shape now. And that seems to let it actually just slide onto the frame in all four corners. So I'll throw those nuts on there and then I think this thing will be ready to go in the truck for real. So it's time to put the weather strip back in this truck. Uh, I just bought this kit online. I'm not exactly sure where I bought it from, but I'll go back and uh, post a link down here just in the case this stuff works out good and you guys want to buy some for yourselves. So I got a tube with this 3M yellow weather strip adhesive. And I'm just going to use this to stick this new weather strip uh, back on the cab of the truck here. So I've used this stuff in the past and the directions always say to put a, like a thin layer on the truck and then a thin layer on the actual gasket and then let them dry till they get good and tacky and stick them together and it kind of works like sticking two pieces of masking tape together on the sticky sides and then it really just like bites in and holds real well so I'll just kind of maybe lay this gasket out a little bit just to make sure it's going to lay out okay and So it looks like there's plenty of material here to go all the way around. So at this point I'm just going to go ahead and put the glue on here and put some glue down in the seam of this door gasket and let it start drying and getting tacky. I'm going to put my seam up here on the top of the door. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to put another door sill back in this thing. and I feel like if I try to glue it down on the floor it's going to end up uh, just coming loose. So I think up here in the center of the door is a good place for it. This Gasket isn't pre-molded by any means, it's just like a continuous strip of uh, this style of gasket material here, so um, no need to, uh, I guess, buy any that's Ford F100 specific or anything. Looks like you could just buy whatever style of gasket this is and specified number of feet and then you could do your own vehicle. Probably save some money. That seems to make that door seal up a little bit better. The door's uh, nice and tight. It's actually got a bit of a gap in it here. Well, that's not too bad. So I might move that door striker in just a little bit just to kind of get this gap out of here. See if I can make this sit a little bit more flush with the cab. But besides that, I think it's good. Door's got a nice pop to it. Presses against that weather strip melt nicely. I'll get the other side down over there and uh, we'll call this thing ready to hit the road. So here it is, all finished up, ready to go. Carpet's in, seats are in, dash pad's in. Got all the door trim back on, the new door handles. I left those door panels off just because they were so like water damaged and the clips were all torn out of the back. I might try to replace them or figure out something else to do there. All in all, the seat fits well. It's nice to sit in, it fits real nice in the cab. Definitely worth the investment. Kind of gives you a cool modern look in the thing too.